guys it's Paige welcome back to my channel so I just wanted to film this quick video because a lot of you guys have been reaching out to me within the last few months within the last few weeks somebody even reached out to me yesterday <laughs> some of you guys are planning to arrive in London next month to study or work um, some of you guys are trying to decide if you should come in January so a lot of these questions are just like hey Paige I'm just wondering what is it like in London right now what can I actually expect when I arrive and since I've been here in London throughout this entire pandemic, I have not left England since 2019. Yeah, I've been here through this whole thing. So I thought that I would just film this and let you guys know what London is like right now in my eyes, from my point of view. It's such a strange time. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are so tired of hearing those words, but things are really strange right now. And I'm just gonna do my best to break it down as best as I can. A lot of people who have reached out to me have used my vlogs, my London vlogs as a guide for them as they prepare to move over here and begin their studies in London. And I know that you all were hoping to have a very similar experience as well. But of course, things are very, very different now than they were when I arrived here in January, 2019. The pandemic is still very much alive. We all know this. I actually have a good friend who tested positive for COVID just a few weeks ago. So we know that it's still out there, right? The only thing is that now majority of the lockdown restrictions have been lifted and things are starting to feel a little bit more normal, I guess, or people are behaving, you know, more normally than we were a few months ago. And of course, there's no telling how things are gonna be a month from now, um, how things are gonna be in September, or how things are even going to be next week. We don't know, we don't know. But I thought that I would just hop on here and tell you guys what London is like at this very moment, today, as I'm filming this, as we speak, right now, okay? Okay, so since majority of people that have reached out to me are students, we're gonna start with what I know about universities and studying. I've been communicating for a while with a couple of people who are going to be arriving here the first week of September and they've just kind of been giving me insight on what it's going to be like when they do arrive and what they've been told so far. So apparently once you arrive in the UK, once you arrive in London, you're going to have to quarantine in your place of residence for 14 days. I know someone that's going to be attending my university, the University of Greenwich, and she was told that they were going to have someone helping the students get their groceries and things like that because you're not supposed to really leave where you're staying. I'm not sure if that's changed, but I thought that was a really nice gesture because I mean, a lot of people are coming here alone and know nobody, have no friends or family here when they arrive. So it's like, how else would they get what they need, right? I also know that most universities are going to be doing a combination of like, online courses and face-to-face -face sessions, classes or whatever. One person told me that they're actually gonna be doing 80% of their studies online and only 20% in person. Um, and that person was really happy and excited to hear about that. But then I know that there are others who are like, wow, I was really looking forward to that in-person class experience. So yeah, I don't know. I guess it depends on the university and how they're gonna move forward. So the halls of residence, uh, libraries, and other social spaces are going to be open, um, at least at the University of Greenwich, but you're definitely gonna see some extra health and safety measures taking place. Fewer people being allowed into these spaces at a time. There's gonna be hand sanitizer points and like one-way systems on entering buildings so that people aren't like, you know, going past each other like that. But like I said, it really just depends on the university and it's probably best that you just reach out to them directly to find out like what precautions they're taking and how things have changed due to the pandemic. Okay, next we have grocery stores. I want to say since the end of July, correct me if I'm wrong guys, I believe since the end of July, um, masks have now become mandatory in all shops. And I use the word mandatory a little bit loosely, okay? So when they first made this announcement, they let everybody know that from this point forward, if you're not wearing a mask in the shops, then you're going to be fined 100 pounds, okay? But the thing is, I go to the grocery store a lot and there are many people in there who still don't wear masks. And I don't see anybody patrolling or enforcing this rule or fining anyone. So I do see a lot more people wearing them but it's still not everyone. I can say that for sure. There used to be arrows on the floor so that people would only go a certain way down the aisles in the store, but those have since been removed since the uh, enforcement of the mask or whatever. I mainly just shop at Asda, so I don't really know how they're handling it in other shops, but yeah. 
then you have places like the Apple Store and Westfield Shopping Center who are extremely strict when it comes to masks and they actually take your temperature before you're allowed to go inside of the Apple Store. So yeah, two opposite ends of the spectrum there. Um, there's only been one other place that took my temperature before I came in and it was like an outdoor restaurant area, but I'll get into that in a bit. Now let's get on to public transportation. So from the beginning, masks were enforced on public transportation. Like they were not playing any games when it came to that. Um, there have always been huge signs saying, wear your mask, wear your mask. There have been a couple times where I've seen people who didn't have a mask on or, you know, pulled it down or whatever. Um, but majority of the time, people have masks on. You will see majority of people on public transportation wearing a mask. And the closest station to me, they have made it like a one entrance, one exit type of thing. You have to go, everybody who wants to enter has to go the same way and everybody who wants to exit has to come out. Yeah, they don't want people like passing each other and making it super crazy. It means I have to leave out a few minutes earlier, but safety first. The buses can get a little bit stressful um, because I guess they have like a, number limit of people that can get on the bus at one time now so that there's not a bunch of people standing close to each other on the bus because usually the bus can get pretty packed like they'll let you pack in there like sardines you know in the past but now i think they have a limit because there have been times that i was running really really late and the bus drove past and the driver holds up a sign that says bus full as he's driving like this driving past you and then everyone at the bus stop is like huffing and puffing like oh my gosh are you serious are you serious at least that's how I am. But um, <laughs> And when I was on the train last weekend, this is the first time that I've ever seen police actually patrolling the cars of the train and making sure people had their mask on. I have never seen this in any other case, but I was on the train um, and the people around me didn't have their masks on and the police, it was two police officers, uh, they came through and they were like, hey, they're really nice about it. They weren't rude or like, you know, saying we're gonna find you right away or anything like that. But they were like, hey, you know, I'm gonna have to call you out. Like, where's your mask? Can you put your mask on? And then the person just did it. So it wasn't um, a huge deal. They just made sure they did. Uh, yeah. Most restaurants and bars are open again. As far as restaurants, I see a lot more restaurants um, promoting like the outdoor seating. Um, there's this one area close to me that I always pass on my daily walks and they have completely like shut down that road and have put a bunch of chairs and tables outside in the middle of the street. So people are able to just dine out there. And most of those restaurants are really like small anyway. And I think they're trying to just avoid people sitting inside. So there are people who are actually just sitting in the middle of this like closed off road. And I don't know where they got these tables and chairs from, but it's actually like kind of nice. I don't know, it's a cute setup, but I don't know how long they're gonna keep it like that. I mean, I guess until it's safe to eat inside again, but for now that row is blocked off and it is for dining purposes only. Like I mentioned earlier, I have only had my temperature taken at one place and it was this place called Pop Brixton that I went to and it's like, how do I explain it? It's like a place that has like a lot of food stalls I had never been there before, um, well, pre-pandemic, but I was told that usually when you went there, it was like super crowded always. People were like uh, hopping from table to table. They're like um, like a picnic table set up, I think. Yeah, and most of the seating. And then there's like the stalls that you can just go up to them. You like wait in line and get your food. That's completely changed. That is not how it is right now. We had our temperatures taken once we got to the door before we got in. Um, they said that you have to put your mask on before you walk inside. The person that I was with uh, forgot their mask in the car. So they were allowed to purchase one for one pound, one of those disposable ones for one pound. And then we were um, sat in like the little waiting area. We we're still outside throughout this whole time, but we have our mask on and they're like, okay you know here are the new rules you have to keep your mask on until you're seated at your table if you're going to leave your table you have to put your mask back on like to go to the bathroom and stuff once we got to the table um we were told that they now have like an app where you i think it was an app or it was a website but you basically get on there and you can see a list of all the restaurants that are in that place and you order your food on the app and then someone brings it to you so it's a completely different setup from being able to go up to whatever stall you want and just place your order and wait or you know whatever they want you to sit at your table and not leave your table while you're in there and they will bring everything to you. 
And one more important factor when it comes to eating at that place, they now have a two hour limit. Yes, you can only sit there for two hours. Whereas before, I'm under the impression that you could just hang out there as long as you want to. You know, in the summertime, people love doing that. They get a few drinks and food and they just can hang out in a spot all day. But nope, you get a two hour seating time. And after our two hours were up, they definitely came to our table and said, thank you for you know coming your time is up you're, you're gonna have to leave now basically so yeah that was that was different but at least we're able to go out to eat again because you know eating out is a big social activity so it makes things feel a little bit more normal even though there's like extra rules and precautions um being taken place now okay let's get on to like social activities parties things like that um going out in london is something that I really, really, really have enjoyed during my time here. I would spend a lot of time in Shoreditch. I would be at Corner Shop and Box Park and just hanging out, having drinks with my friends. It was a good old time and I miss it dearly. I really do. Um, but that whole thing is completely different now. So I don't believe that these bars are allowed to open up as like clubs at night right now. I, that, that's what I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think they can like be a club. They can be a bar where people can come and sit in there and like have drinks and stuff. I don't think people are allowed to like have their dance floors open and let people like be all up on each other like that right now. I've been to Box Park since it reopened. I haven't been there on a weekend. Um, if you guys aren't familiar with Box Park, it's just like another place, kind of like Pop Brixton where they have like a bunch of different food stalls. Um, and it used to just be really, really, really crowded in there on weekends. So much fun, but definitely not safe during a pandemic. So I think they also are like limiting the amount of people that can come inside. I know um, that when you go into these places now, that is one other thing I wanted to say. When you go into these places, they have like a QR code on the wall while you're queuing up, like waiting to get inside. And you take a picture with your phone and then it pulls up this page, this web page, and you have to fill it out and it's basically your name, I think your email, your phone number, stuff like that. And they basically just want to keep track of everybody that comes into these places because if they find out that someone there, I guess, tests positive for COVID, maybe an employee, a guest, I don't know, they're able to like notify everyone uh, that, you know, they should probably go get tested. So there's so many different precautions now that they're trying to take. So I definitely appreciate that. I've been starting to see flyers again for day parties for like the end of the month and like early September. So I think that's starting to happen again. I know that people have been having like big house parties and barbecues. I don't know. I don't know. People are just doing what they want to do. People are doing what they want to do. Ooh. And lastly, we're going to talk about traveling. So traveling has been one of my favorite, favorite, favorite parts about moving abroad. Traveling throughout Europe is so accessible, so affordable, so just easy. It's really easy <laughs> um, to do. And in 2019, I really took advantage. I traveled to 15 countries um, that year. And obviously, I haven't gone anywhere in 2020. But yeah, a lot of you guys who watch my vlog said that you wanted to have like a similar experience when you got over here. You wanted to see more of the world, see more of Europe. I don't know guys, I don't know. Um, I have seen that people are starting to travel again, um, but mostly people who are from here, from the UK, British people. Cause you know, as an American, things are a little bit weird right now for travel. I think Americans and American passports are banned in most parts of the world. It's so crazy to say that like, Americans are banned from like traveling, but um, yeah, I don't, I still don't know if that applies to me. I put like a question on Instagram and I asked um, if I have a British uh, residence card, if I'm a resident right now of the UK, I haven't been in the US in 2020 at all. I haven't been there since 2019. Am I allowed to travel in Europe? Some people said yes. Some people said that they were American and they have been traveling. Um, in Europe and that it was fine because they have that um, UK residence permit. And then there were some other people telling me that no, I couldn't go anywhere. But I honestly don't think they know the answer. So 
um yeah i'm not trying to go anywhere at this very moment um i've told you guys before though that i do want to visit my friend therese in sweden in stockholm uh, i just don't know when that's gonna be i also really want to go home soon that's stressful as well because the whole quarantine when i get back and stuff yeah things are just weird but I know that I have watched people's stories and they are like having beach parties in Italy and Greece and I don't know how I feel about that. What's going on here? I don't know. So if you were really looking forward to having like travel be a big part of your experience, I don't know. I don't know how that's gonna go. Um, I don't know. We're just gonna have to see how things progress over the next few months or so, I guess and i think that's all i've got guys um i hope this was helpful for someone out there uh for those of you who are planning on arriving in london soon i hope this gives you a little bit of insight on what to expect if you guys would like maybe i can do you know updates in the future if anything changes anything significant changes um i can let you guys know what life is like in london during this pandemic <laughs> because once again it ain't over it ain't over so yeah as always guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful don't forget to give me a thumbs up and of course hit that subscribe button if you haven't already see you guys in the next one bye